Beckman Unleashed podcast number 24, Eric. We are live. All right, let's get going. So we've got some voicemails. We've got a lot of comments on the um, um, hierarchy of trainers last week, but I'm looking at myself right now and I just have to bring it up because I look funny. I have Invisalign in and I I wasn't going to bring it up and then I saw myself on the video and it looks weird. So mm. I'm going to bring it up right now. So that's what's going on. If I slur my speech a little bit, which I shouldn't, but you know, are you still going to be the same good quality dog trainer with Invisalign? I think so. Yeah, okay. we'll see. Um, but that's what's going on. So I didn't want to bring it up, but I look odd. I feel like so that's what's going on there. Fair All enough. right. We have a bit video that is pretty big right now. Probably our biggest video ever. You were saying 100,000 views, probably 120,000 views. And we put it out two days ago. So the topic for today is going to be how I raised my two dogs because Prince is such a big part of the video when he corrects this German Shepherd and that's the, the, the turning point of the whole session is when he corrects that dog and what a dog can do and how I use my two dogs and how I've used them in the history of that and how I raise them. And people are asking all about Prince and saying how Prince is the best boy ever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about how I raise my dogs and that's going to be kind of the main topic. Then we'll get into all the other stuff. Yeah. We ran into that, right? Cause we were talking about the video and we're thinking, well, people don't have a Prince at home. So what do yeah, they do? That's true. In the video, I was like, you don't have a Prince at home. I get it. And so let's talk about how you do have a prince at home, yeah. how, how to make a prince at home. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I'll add, since you have Invisalign, I obviously am sick under the weather, but the podcast must go on. And so yeah. we're a bit uh, challenged today, but we're going to, we're going to push yeah, through it. Challenge. My kids are sick. Are they? It's like a respiratory thing going around. Oh man. Hopefully you get it. Yeah, oh. I probably will. Good stuff. All right. Sitting we'll take it away, you. man. I definitely will. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you got about a three three square foot uh area here so yeah good luck all right so how let's bring up that video mm -hmm. so we're gonna play a video that i did about a year ago and it's gonna show you my dogs in action go ahead and i'm just gonna talk over it okay i'm let's just gonna start that right up. okay all right this is bosco is this is my first dog so we're i'm not gonna diagnose every video i'm just gonna let you kind of watch as we do mm -hmm. this but the bosco is the red doberman not Re that black one next red to doberman so Bosco and Prince, my two dogs, have been doing stuff like that. He did not get bit right there. Have been doing stuff like this for many, many years. This dog right here, the Red Doberman, is the dog that showed me that this could be done, that dogs could help other dogs. He showed me. I didn't show him. Once he passed, about two years later, the Red Doberman passed about two years. There's a property. It looks much different now. About two years later, I got Prince. I then trained Prince to be as much like Bosco as he could be, but he's a different dog who grew up in a different situation. And I'm going to talk about that than Bosco. Prince did not have the same life that Bosco had. So this is from a video where this just dog is super duper annoying. Um, and Prince changes this dog in about five seconds or not in five seconds, it's a little longer than that, but in a five second period of time, Prince changes this dog fundamentally. Mm -hmm. And both Bosco and Prince did that. So that's a young, that's a young Prince right there, right? Fairly young. It's like a year and a half ago. I mean, he's probably two and a half. Okay. Prince is more patient than Bosco. And, and you're going to see Bosco with a little white dog and you're going to just get the sense of, of the way Bosco, look, look at Prince. He is. He's just like, Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Now, you guys might be asking, why didn't you correct him? This, I tried to correct this dog many times. There are dogs that lose their minds when they see other dogs. They can't. Here is the correction here, right we, here. Can we pause it real quick? Just so the people that are not watching this on video, oh, yeah. um, there are those folks. That, that is, is a good uh, Spotify, point. Apple. This dog, and you'll have to go check it out. The video is called Flex, or it says, When Other Dogs Flex on My Dog, I think. And it's got five-ish, almost five million views. Five hundred thousand. Five million? Yeah. That's this 4. this 9 video million. has five million views. Yeah, I have no million. idea. Just under five million, I know for a fact. Oh, wow. So this video, but it's about year, year and a half old, whatever. Um, but the basically, what type of dog is that? A French bulldog. French bulldog just jumping at his face, 
over and over and over again. Just, just annoyingly, unbelievably annoyingly, not unbelievably aggressively. Yeah, Prince should have went after him. And Prince is going to whoop Wait. his little behind right now. All right. And he deserves the, the whooping. Okay, here it goes. So now he's pushing him. They're in the pasture now. And Prince is trying to say, please stop. And oh! then and he goes and after then him. just a straight whooping. And then the dog, nowhere's for wear, but he's a different Look dog. Shell shocked. Can you go back to that? Yeah, or he let's like, go back to he this. He runs in. I said I wasn't going to. Oh, that's it. Shows the little mountains here. That's the biggest. Oh, yeah. uh, but if yeah. okay, yeah, this go is, back. This go is back. so huge right here. Oh, no, it's not that. It is where he gets that attack. Yeah, but right goes, there. Right there. He goes. He. After the whoop, and this one dog just walks up to him, and he's just like, "Oh my god!" Like That's his magic. his world just changed. Yeah, he goes after him. He turns, runs into a golden retriever. And I was like, "Whoa!" He's totally shocked. He's he's shell shocked as he should be. It's like the kid running around robbing people and holding them up at gunpoint, and then something. Then someone stands up to him. Mm -hmm. You know, not that that little dog was so had this a one or anything. This one was the cattle dog. I think that was the I'm surprised that this is on here. This is that long ago now, huh? Things times have been flying by. Yeah. This was that same cattle god that that he put in check, right? I don't know. This Thanks. is so go ahead and play it. Um, Prince, this is when Prince was learning yeah, to be backing Prince. down. Okay, this is before he'd ever really corrected a dog and he just. I like his movements into the dog, mm -hmm. right? He's just saying, you're barking, you're lunging, you're unsocialized. I'm not going to, uh, uh, you have not done enough to get a correction, but you got to, you got to back it up. You're mm -hmm. not. And, and it's a cattle dog, right? So it's got a lot of emotions going on. He's young. So Prince, also the play bounce, mm -hmm. you know, my dogs both put dog, try to put dogs at ease with a play bow before they ever now, this is Bosco a long time ago. Look at the fence really down in the old. pasture. Wow. This is a chow. And watch the run up for those. Watch. Okay, there's the play bow. There's always a play bow. And then watch the, watch the back down. This is what Bosco did. The be Look at the look. And then boom. And then get it, back it out of here. This is my space. Now, this is the video. Little white dog looking super ferocious. There's Queen, all. Queen. I'm just going to slow you down for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bosco was pretty built, huh? He's in good shape pretty strong yeah right the, maybe a bit more than prince or no you think he just seems in the the first video we watched at the very beginning mm. of this he seemed like he was pretty shredded um and then also that last one we saw with the cattle dog i think it's this one don't mess with prince reactive cattle dog socialized in one session yeah if I you want to see that yeah it's that one that's about five hundred thousand views and that's from yeah. a year ago any, i was just surprised any of this stuff any prince correcting or bosco correcting yeah five hundred thousand views every time and you think this Can is the you, best one here or no no, I think this, yes. Well, his, the first video with that black Doberman mm -hmm. with the tail, that video 10 years ago went viral on Facebook. Mm. People were, it went all over the world viral on Facebook. It was my first viral experience, mm -hmm. but it was on Facebook, which was Except kind of in high weird. school, right? What? Never mind. Keep yeah. Going. So, and then, and then, but. This this one is probably the most impressive. Prince has had a couple since I made this video that are maybe more impressive, but this I think. Can you? This was impressive. Is this a Shih Tzu or no? Yeah, it's a Shih Tzu type dog. Can okay. you imagine if I had the cameras rolling, um, 10, 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago when I did all these sessions with Bosco? I never filmed any sessions. I know, dude. There would be so many like Bosco doing Bosco things. I will get into how I raise my dogs. But we got deep into these videos, which I hope you like, because most of you probably haven't seen this video. This is interesting. You haven't seen every one of my videos. It also doesn't get old. Um, this is super awesome. Why would this get old there? So there's so the play good. bow. I want to be your friend. And dog goes, yeah, well, I don't want to be your friend. And then little white dog, for those listening, jumps up. And here's the magic. Well, partly the magic of Bosco. Who's going to win the stare off? Okay. Bosco ain't losing. Now, Bosco does another play bow. He's probably nine years old at this point. He knows the dog's not going to do anything. He's a master of dog by language. So he does another play bow. I think he just wants to get the dog going. To be honest with you, <laughs> the dog licks his you got to have some fun in life. Yeah, dog does a little lip lick and Bosco knows that means the dog doesn't really want to fight, but he does another quick play bow. I think he's just saying, let's see what you got. Little dog freaks out. And then here's the part that the people in the comments loved. And it's this sideways back down. So for people listening, he's walking into the dog, 
with eye contact, the dog has to move, right? If you ever see me grab a dog and move them backwards, it's it's because the dog needs to give a little bit. Mm -hmm. These these certain attitude. So there's the backup right there. So who's winning the battle, right? Clearly Bosco. It's Bosco. And then he go and then he just for some reason wants to go close to him. And then this is where in the comments people trip out on is this that look and that walk away right about now. Little lip like saying, hey, let's be cool. And then that just look and that walk away, away like he's like he's like he's like uh you know, and then like they walk scurrying away. Scurrying away. And then did you did you ever um do you remember what happened with that one or no? That little dog? Yeah. Oh no, I don't I don't remember. Like you don't remember if he was like rehabilitated or if that made a difference with the dog or not really no i don't remember you just remember he got totally punked basically yeah i mean it's probably good for him you know he met a dog so so let's talk about um how i raise my dogs can you pause that yeah real quick um how i raise my dogs so you saw my dogs in action bosco was had a very different life than prince did Bosco was our first child. And why am I saying it like that? Because me and my wife had no kids. We got him while we still worked at SeaWorld. I think I left like two months after we got Bosco. I left SeaWorld. So he, I, he wasn't with us before I started the biz, Beckman's dog training. But we he was our baby. And that's why mm -hmm. I don't really like get on clients when they're like, oh, it's my baby. I've been there. Yeah, I had no kids. That. I remember we went to Big Bear with Bosco. He was like a year old, let's say. We had booties on him. Big Bear's like cold, but it's not that cold. It's not freaking, you know, it's, it's not. There, yeah, it snows. It's cold. He's a dog. Mm -hmm. They Dogs love snow. I don't care how short their hair is. We had booties on him. We had two jackets on him. We had, I remember, we still have the jackets. We had a sweater kind of goofy, huh? and then a jacket because we thought our little Bosco bear was going to get so cold. And then we got there and he's running around like, Hey, we took the booties off. We took one jacket off, took two jackets off. He was fine. But that's my, my point. I remember those moments of us thinking like, this is our little baby. And we're like a newly married couple mm -hmm. or maybe we weren't married yet. So it was the closest thing we had to a kid. That's why I don't, I don't get mad at people when yeah. they're, when they think that's why I always ask if people have kids. Cause when people have kids, it's generally different. But if it's a couple and they have one dog, I know why they're treating their dog that way. They're almost like training yeah, no, for it's, children. It's a, yeah, it's like a reenactment or a, a test. It's like a like test. How, how If we can manage this dog well, then we could probably manage a human well. And they have so much love for the dog um, because they're a couple and they got this dog together. So so they make a lot of mistakes. I, we didn't make a ton of mistakes, but we were also animal trainers. But So we got Bosco and he was our little baby. Then we started the business and we started getting bored and trains. So... The two things in my dog's lives, Bosco and Prince, that have been constant. They grew up in very different times. I had three children by the time Prince came around. And he grew up in, and we were busy all the time with the business. Hmm. The two things that were consistent between Bosco and Prince, because they're some of the best dogs ever videoed on camera and put on the internet, is me and my wife is one constant. Mm -hmm. And being around a lot of dogs. I wasn't the trainer I was with Bosco than I am with Prince. Yeah, you were a lot better back then, I thought. I was different back then, right? You were more, you were more I was moldable. softer. Yeah. I was a little softer. So, but so the two things that my dogs both had, if you want to find similarities between the raising of two dogs who are so good, is me and my wife. And I would say not to disparage my wife in any way, but I'm the dog trainer is out with them and my, probably training them more That's than her. What this podcast is all about, right? So yeah. yeah, is is me me training them, and then being around a lot of dogs. The dog thing is probably the more important thing than even me training them. Me tra because Bosco, I didn't train. I trained them differently, mm -hmm. so my, my training is it wasn't even the same with the two dogs. Bosco was like our baby and we used all positive reinforcement. And Prince, I I sort of, I don't feel bad for Prince. Prince came into the world in a pretty hectic world. We had three kids, business was rolling, board and trains at the house all the time. 
Yeah, but but Prince was born famous. Like Bosco had to earn it, you know. That's yeah. why he's called Prince. Like Bosco was like the king. And yeah, he had to get the street cred and run the streets like Rocky. Yeah, and then Prince just kind of got born into this like Beckman lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of yeah. did get born into it, and it, it was different. But the the thing that's probably most consistent with the two dogs and why they are the way that they are is their masters at dog body language and more so than like someone going to the dog park every other day, which is a lot mm -hmm. because I was in control of the facility dog park. There's no control. So basically they became masters of dog body language. You see that montage I just played. You have to be a master of dog body language to do both of those things. Those dogs did. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying those two dogs, my two dogs are the only dogs that correct a dog or back down dog. That's not the case. Some dogs are born like that. Bosco was kind of born like that. Yeah. But you got to be around a lot of dogs to become really good at it and become really like the little white dog. that Bosco back down was very different from the black Doberman that Bosco dealt with at the first part of that video. Those are two totally different dogs with two totally different things. And so you just have to see. So they, they've seen so many dogs, so many, so much behavior that they both became masters of body language. The other thing which involves me, and this is going to be sort of maybe you guys won't understand this. Maybe Eric won't understand this. I walked around my facility like I am the boss of my facility because I am the boss of my facility. So do you think my kid, Bosco or Prince, felt protected and important? Yes. He they was also probably they move were, out of your way when you, when you come walking through. The dogs? Yeah. Yeah. That's and Bosco sees that. Mm -hmm. And Prince sees that. The dogs see that. Kids see that way more. The dogs also see it. Where those dogs go, oh, this this guy's my dad, and the dogs respect him. So they kind of feel emboldened now, but you can't let your kids or your dog feel emboldened enough to be jerks to other dogs, which none yeah. of my dogs are. Yeah, I think that's funny, though. You could see different animals, cats, dogs, whatever, and you see someone walking through the house. Maybe it's the kid or the wife or somebody, and, the, and they're like not moving out of the way for them, right? Versus you come, come through and they're just like, Whoa! the dogs, like dogs, cats. Yeah, whatever. yeah. They just know something's. I need to get out of the way. This guy's yeah. not going to stop. Yeah, which is why I tell a lot of people, I told a lady on a Zoom call today, she has this, it's a really tough case, but I told her to do some stuff. And then I said, and if the dog's in the hallway, sitting there, staring at you, this dog's like biting this lady. So uh, mm. I won't get into it. I'm like, walk straight yeah. into the dog. Where This is, that's a power move. Yeah. And your dog is biting you, not because your dog is terrified of you. It's like the nicest lady in the world who'd been too nice to her dog. Well, it's time to take a little bit from the two, the account. You've been putting in all this niceness yeah. for two years. It's time to take a little bit. Yeah, this that's actually super interesting. I just got off a call before you came over. I think you were not that late. Probably only, what do you think? Uh, 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah, for you, that's per really early, more yep. or less. But yep. I was talking about prior managers and I was saying how I took something from every one of them, right? I took a little bit from each. Yeah. And I think there's something to, um, and this is something I want to get into with the difference between Bosco and Prince is more about temperament. And um, I'd love you to like come up with like maybe three words because people will think Bosco and Prince, Bosco and Prince, but they're totally different dogs from a, from a, the way they were born like the yeah the, the nature part not the nurture part and and what how do you describe the way bosco was just in, like inherently um born versus the way that prince was and then obviously had to mold prince yeah. more into the aggressive like you don't have to teach some people to be alpha or to be dominant some they just born. do it and some need to learn but some of us need to do a better job being that way and some maybe need to take a step back and not be so dominant in certain cases bosco was born i'll be the first one to say it he was born that way i i did almost nothing with bosco he taught me i, I won't tell the story again he came into the backyard in point loma and this little dog went after him and barked in his face and bosco just stood tall and just act like dog wasn't there and peed and then went and got a ball and dropped it in front of the dog and the dog backed down and it was this unbelievable thing that i'd never seen 
And I was like, okay, we can do something with this. He was just, he was just the most confident, dominant, nice, wants to be friend dog ever. And then he just showed me how to do it. Then I got Prince. But he wasn't afraid to catch a fade and scrap with someone if needed. If, no, he'd whoop anyone. Yeah. He was, he was about the business. Yeah. He was about that life, but he just, he didn't want to fight ever. Someone yeah. wants to fight you, go fight them and beat them up. And it was also in his property. So like he's in not, his house. he's not appreciating dogs yeah. coming over disrespecting him. Right. I, I think, you know, you, you did a great do job training Prince and Bosco did a great job training you. Yeah. That's actually a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. And I do think I did a good job training Prince because Prince was not Bosco. Yeah. And, but Bosco he needed to fully be trained to be like this. Beckman dog training wouldn't be what it is today without Bosco. No, I wouldn't be who I am. No, not even close. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So Prince came into the world. We got him at four months. The breeder called me and said, Hey, this dog got returned. Do you want him? And we said, yes. And I won't tell you the story. We went over there. Boss Prince liked my daughter and the lady liked us. So we had, him. we got him. He's not Bosco. He was more timid. He's more, um, um, he's adverse to, um, um, fighting. No adverse to, to conflict, conflict yeah. more than Bosco was. And I had to slow. You can see it in the videos. I say in one video, I go, Prince is becoming, if I say Bosco and Prince, opposite i apologize hey mm -hmm. i say prince is becoming who i need it to be it's right before that that aussie video it's like it's like a few months before that or maybe six months before that mm -hmm. yeah i can i say i remember that he, i think it's a black german shepherd mm -hmm. prince kind of backs him down and i'm like in the voiceover i say that he's becoming what i need him to become he's like probably a year old yeah and i just slowly had to build him up and how did i do that i would go correct i'd go like this is aggressive dog stuff. Anyone who thinks there's no such thing as aggressive dogs or jerky dogs or dominant dogs, people, dogs coming on my property, try to attack me or my dog. It's not okay Yeah. for no, for us not doing anything. If you think that's okay, you're in a long li line of work. You're mm -hmm. on the wrong podcast, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you got to scroll through and go to some other force free folks. They're going to, they're going to speak your language. And I'd grab the dog and then I'd let Prince like be there and be kind of watching and be jumping around not like scaring the dog but and never would i go like stop it prince because he need to be built up not torn down right if your dog's too much you're like mean to other dogs you need to bring him down i need to bring prince up isn't that weird how that's the same thing with humans that it's all the same people need to be there's people that are too aggressive too confident and it ends up becoming uh like their achilles heel because they just are a bull in a china shop. And so they need that mentor that can be, you know, drop them down a peg and be like, hey, you don't, you need to think of this. You need to think of the other side of the yin and yang. And then there's a lot of people that you have to say, hey, you need to be more aggressive. You need to get, yeah, you need to be tougher. There's you know? both for sure. And it's all learning process, right? As you grow up as a young boy or girl, like you watch, you watch things. And then I saw this short and it was like, there's a point in every young boy's life where he learns. And I don't know if this is true. It was by someone I recognized from all these videos, but it mm -hmm. was like, you know, it was like Jordan Peterson ish, but yeah. there's a lot on like men <laughs> and raising boys and stuff. And he said, there's a point in every boy's life when he realizes that nobody's coming to help you. I like that. And I, I can't really think of that time for me or for my son, but like, um, it's probably true. Because no one is coming to help you, by the way. N no one's coming to help you. On your single... If you're a, if you're a young boy... On your single dad. And your dad, you especially about? when your dad is gone or dies. Mm -hmm. He's about the only one that's going to really help you. Your dad. Your mom will help you. There's a little some limitations to that. She's not going to maybe physically come save you. Mm -hmm. There was... Uh... <laughs> yeah, you always talk about the single dad and uh, or single parent household. And if you don't have that dad... That's when you really realize at 15 or something that yeah, we there's talked no, about that. no dad that's there to help you. I remember being 
uh, junior in high school and my mom and my aunt were getting in a fight. They weren't physically fighting, but they were getting heavy because, uh, my grandmother, my grandmother died or whatever. And, uh, it was getting so out of control. And I remember I just, I stood up and I basically told them like, sit the F down and stop acting like that. And they were like, like I was, I was serious. Yeah. And then, and I was like, Whoa, I think that's probably where I was like, okay, no moss. I'm not dealing with this type yeah. of stuff anymore. Yeah. As 15s you would say. around the age. Yeah. yeah. Where you just kind of become, you know, and then you get further in adulthood where you're like, yeah, there is no one coming for you. If you don't do what you need to do, no one's going to be there. like, if you don't bring the food home, you know, no one's going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Your yeah. family's going to starve if you don't feed them. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So no one's coming to help you. I don't know where I, uh, uh, why I got off on that tangent. Um, but it was, it, so Prince had to be built up. Yeah. And so the thing that you've left out of this, what I think is a pretty kick-ass 25 minutes here okay. is, um, how to raise a dog. What the hell do these people at watch that have these problems? How do, what do they do when they don't have Prince? Now, a, they can just call you and if they're close, I, they can schedule an appointment and they can get out to the facility. People who travel all across the United States. Yes. People in do. Europe. That's a tough, that's a tough trip, right? Yeah. That, that, that's never happened. That would be crazy. People have come from Maine. Private jet, maybe. Maine's as far as you get from San Diego. Yeah, that was impressive. But you've got a f- f- several East Coast people yeah. that have come over. And people will always. I have to. People call me and they're like, I want to drive out from Florida. I'm like, okay, pump your brakes. Well, don't do it. Like, you can. We got to talk about this. I don't want you doing this. Mm-hmm. If Because there's some things that can be fixed and some things that can't. Like, we can do this over the phone. If, um, if, if I'm going to end up talking to you a bunch, might as well just talk. Mm-hmm. Right. But anyway, so the question, so when we talked about the video, so the video that you talked about called the thumbnail says breaking, breaking point, I believe. And it looks like Prince is about to bite this German shepherd's head off. Yeah. Um, so that one, you know, okay, you could go to the facility and have Joel train your dog. Um, we talked during that, production of that about how even if you have no prince you have no bosco you can you have to be that stimulus yourself that intervention that change agent to be like no knock it off yeah and it might not be as good as those dogs it won't be as good but what else are you going to do yeah you're not going to do it as well prince's correction was timed perfectly with about a one hundredth of a second Prince turns around and corrects the dog and it's over in five seconds and the dog's different. What you're going to do, or I'm going to do if Prince didn't do that in that case Mm -hmm. is I'm going to mark the behavior with a clap. I'm going to go grab the dog and I'm going to do a butt touch to kind of, Oh, get him out of his, his insanity. And then I'm going to go, go do it again. You've heard me say that in videos, go do it again. I said it today with a client and you guys have to say that if it's not hurting, hurting a dog, go do it again. Oh, you did it. Okay. We're going to grab, we're going to butt touch dogs going to go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, dude. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to look back at that dog, right? Remember there's no Prince in the mix or Prince is just another random dog. This is hard to do on walks, by the way, mm-hmm. that's leash reactivity. That's different. Sort of different. And then the dog's going to go, Oh, but I want to bark at that dog. And they're going to just forget you're standing there in front of them, holding their collar. They're going to, it's basically giving you the big middle finger dogs, hundred feet away. They're like, I want to look at that dog and bark. What kind of disrespect is that to you? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, the dog's uh, um, super stimulated by dogs. Yeah, I know. But it's time to be super stimulated by you Yeah, because you're not happy with them, but they don't care about you. Mm-hmm. So you got to make them care about you. So then you do the butt touch again or some sort of correction. And then the dog eventually comes back and goes, okay, okay, guy. I don't care about the dog as much. Now that okay guy only lasts for a few seconds sometimes. But three seconds of okay guy is better than one second of okay guy. So you're you're going down the right path. Then they're going to look back at the dog. Maybe you let them go. Maybe you keep holding them. Maybe they bark while they're while you're holding their collar. Give them another correction. Not a hard correction, just enough to get them out of it, right? A little butt touch with a correction. Oh yeah. Oh, forgot you were here, guy. And then eight seconds of looking at you. That's yeah. a win. Then you let the dog go. Oh, it goes back and barks. Okay, we'll do this all day. And you go grab. We will do this all day. Yeah. And, and then, then yeah. There's also this idea of, um, have you ever heard this saying about sometimes you have to feed the beast that's at your door? Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah. I don't know what it means. Yeah. It's just like you have, 
there's a lot of stuff on your plate and maybe this isn't the thing you want to work on or whatever, but this is the beast that's at your door. So you have to deal with what's in front of you kind of thing. And it's almost, if you flip that a bit, that analogy, it's almost like, you know, that, that dog walking while you're on a walk is like that beast that's at your door, but you need him to think that you're the beast knocking on his door that like he needs to worry about you more than he needs to worry about that dog in the walk. And if he does, that's going to change the entire dynamic of that walk. If he's like, and that's why, and we know this, I'm not just making this up. I know because I've seen the clients walk the dogs. I've seen you take the dog and the dog's like looking at you like, Whoa, wait, what's happening here. This guy's in control. And then, then the customer goes, well, he's not doing it when you, when you do it. Yeah. That, there's a reason why. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. Hey, but also you're not, it's just like the doorway method, right? You're starting off on the right foot. You're not letting him blast out the door. Yeah. Like Dennis, the menace, like hanging on to the dog or something. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. Maybe I gloss over what you just said at times. You, your dog needs to be more worried about you in these situations than they are about that dog. I kind of can't um, express that enough, how important that is, what you just said. I love whenever you say something like that. Yeah. I don't know how to get it through to people, though. It's been 15 years of trying to get it through in videos and at sessions, and I'll do it at sessions, and the people will get 10% better at it, and then they'll leave. I mean, every... and they need to get 70% better at it and they're not there. And I don't know how, I don't know how to tell them. There's a, there's a dynamic problem that's happening that people don't, they don't understand the nature of it. Just like when you, we talk about like going to Mexico and we're like, well, do your average, uh, folks out in the country in Mexico, do they have these problems? And it's like, no. And so there's a problem with like the dynamic of, it's not, you know, like you said at the beginning, right? It's not your baby. The dog is not your baby. It's not your child. There is a, unfortunately, there is a hierarchy in there. And also there should be a hierarchy because you are tasked. And I think dog daddy said this on, on the podcast he was with us, where he's talking about like, you're in charge of the care and protection of that dog. So like the dog's not in necessarily in protect, like he's not charged really with protecting you. Now there's times where it could be the case, but like, you are responsible for the welfare of that dog. And so I always think it's funny. And I've told you this on the phone about uh, my neighbor who has some type of doodle and um, the dog was like out of control running in the street. And I was just using like some of your basic methods and it worked. Oh, and it worked. And yeah. the dog was like, Whoa, it like looked at me and, and it was so unconcerned with what uh, my neighbor who's a gal was, was doing. Yeah. And, um, but I still think I got the same kind of cold shoulder that you got a bit or that you get sometimes from your neighbor. Yeah. Where they're like, he's just like mean to dogs. I'm like, I'm not mean. I didn't do anything to the dog. Yeah. I just knew the dog. Like, I just am not afraid to go, Hey, yeah. and then the dog just goes, Whoa. Right. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a good thing. Look, a pound yeah. of, what is it? Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I believe that you got to get out of your head that this is a baby that cannot be, um, that cannot be corrected in any way. Then the people, there are people, many, many people that have never gotten to the level of assertiveness in their entire life, or it's been very fleeting that they have to get with their dog 10 times on a walk. They've never looked at their husband and said, don't ever do that to me again or this is going to happen and then enforced that deal. They've mm -hmm. never looked at their employees or their boss and said, don't ever talk to me about been, been very clear, been very concise, known when to known when to walk away, known when the person doesn't get the point and you need to go, okay, let me explain this to you more mm -hmm. and done this sort of very clear punishment deal and very clear, um, Communication. Communication. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they don't do that. They don't know how to do that. And then I'm telling them to do it 10 times on a walk. It's like the red line to some degree. Like you draw a line and you're like, do not cross. Like I have certain lines that I don't allow to be crossed. And you draw those out for your family, probably for your kids, your wife, your employer. 
that's you, true. And let me cut you off yeah. because when, when it's dealing with dogs, session, my sessions today I had three sessions today. Um, people are really surprised when I let their dog growl at another dog mm -hmm. or I let their dog, um, chuff or I let their dog the lunge. Chuffing? I think it's a big cat term that I brought to dog training turn. It's a, it's a half bark. It's like a, like they're, they want to bark. They, they're not stimulated enough to bark. It's a chuff. Cats do it. Mm. Big cats do it. But I'll let their dog do all this stuff. Today, I let a dog lunge, do this jumpy lunge because it's a hundred times better than that bark. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're going to let these things happen because it's degrees of badness mm -hmm. and we're not going to, you can't punish or correct every behavior. Yeah. You need quick wins. You have right? some terrible husband or wife or boss or kids. Like you can't just like, you're going to be, all you're going to do is be mad at your husband. Yeah. How about if you just go, Hey, you can't do that for these horrible things he does and yeah. let some other things go, then slowly work backwards and eliminate those. Everything is like that in life. Yeah, life's like that. If you think about- um, Fix our, every problem tomorrow. The guy who was the city manager of the city that I live in, um, we were on a board together and he used to always talk about- The quick, mayor of this city called me years ago. Quick victories. Wanted me to quick- Really? Fix, um, help him with his dog. Go ahead. Yeah, quick victories. And he was saying like, on this board, and it was like, for, um, you know, it was like a nonprofit. And it needed help. And um, of course, being in the banking industry, I got to be the uh, whatever the treasurer yeah. when I didn't want to be. Um, yeah. They just voted when I wasn't there. But um, he was like, you know, we got to get some quick victories. We got to get some victories under our belt, small ones, just something that we can say, okay, we 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 moved not not to be, um, hey, look at what we did. It's about okay, we've accomplished a little thing. Now we can accomplish something bigger and bigger and bigger. And just so it's like. Because there's an unlimited universe of things that can be done. And you end up thinking the things you want to do are like impossible. Like what are the things that are the the beast at the door? What are the things that are right in front of us that we can address and solve? Right. And I yeah. think that's and I liked your um red line or not red line, but your your do not things that I absolutely will not accept that um yeah. whether it's dog, anything in life, because um, you know. Um, and I think maybe that some people are too passive and it reminds me of, uh, I told you about this guy from Hawaii who just, um, he was, he's a cowboy, right? He's, he's like doing all this crazy cowboy stuff and they like his boss just tries to like take him off cowboy duty. And he goes, Hey, I'm here to be a cowboy. Like I'm here to work with cattle and all kinds of stuff. I want to work on the ranch. And they're like, well, we, we need to do all this stuff. He's like, I do cowboy stuff or I'm gone there's no debating about this yeah and they were like well sorry for a few weeks you're gonna have to do this office stuff it's like he's like later and he just left and went to go somewhere else and okay. i think you have to be able to do that yeah in life like you have to be able to say all right burn it down we'll try something completely different you know yeah. otherwise yeah. you're just gonna get bullied your whole life yeah you yeah know? i agree so the the you gotta you gotta go hard you get, they got to be worried more about you than they are about that dog. Now there's nuance to that. If the dog is out of its mind, they can't worry about you. Mm -hmm. They're just, their brain is somewhere else. Their drive to herd is, is too deep. Their, their protection of you is too deep. Their, um, fear of that dog is too deep. That all plays into this. That's why I never just overwhelm the dog. I let them run away if they want to run away. I watch their eyes. I watch every little thing. You can see it in this video, in these mm -hmm. videos. And then I say, okay, you're not terrified. Okay, you want to hurt that dog. M maybe, maybe, maybe you're the one that needs to be emotionally hurt a little bit wow, by, sounds, by me or yeah. by Prince or by the owner. That sounds bad. Emotionally hurt? The force free folks are going to go crazy on that. Yeah, the force free folks, uh, they don't work with the dogs I work with. And until they do, um But they say they do. Remember last year? Yeah, they episode? just they just say they do. <laughs> it's the funniest they're thing. on the bottom of the uh yeah, the pyramid. Acting like they're people the like that pyramid. Yeah. We should get into that. So we should basically let me it. button up the yeah. two dogs. Prince was who he was, Bosco was who he was, Bosco was born, Prince was um uh I say Bosco was born, Prince was um made. built. Yeah, or made. Yeah. Prince was made, Bosco was 
born. And that's the truth. And I don't know why. I'm just, it's because I'm, I'm me in mm-hmm. part and I have the facility. Bosco and I'm not is, messing around. Bosco is like Bo Jackson, How, Herschel Walker. Be a, be a loving parent that isn't messing around and then call me in 20 years. Yeah. And then all your dog's problems will be solved. All your kid problems will be solved. Yeah. Be a loving parent who does the best for your kids, but you're not screwing around and call me in 20 years. Or let your kids get away with a bunch of nonsense and then call me in 20 years. I pretty much guarantee how that's going to go. This is, and you might think you're being kind of mean to your kids sometimes. And you might be occasionally a little too mean or something, but yeah, just call me in 20 years and we'll see how this goes. Okay. You guys heard it 20 years. Give Joel a call. We're still leave a voice. Podcast. I'm leave like a voicemail. 60, 6,000. We're, uh, Episode 6,000. Yeah. Although yeah. we're weekly. Who knows what? Is that true? Be. Did you just do the math? No. It'd be 20 oh. times 50, I think, which is 1,000. Episode 1,000. It's possible. Right. It's a little more than that. But yeah, it'd be. Yeah. That just shows how long. Um, see, but Rogan, I think, does it two to three days a week. So that's why he's out, I think, at like 2,000. Yeah. Can you imagine doing that level of. Um, have you buttoned everything up, the up on that? I think so. If you have questions, write them in the comments. We'll answer them next week. Yeah, so I want to just tease out a funny little idea here while on your little comment about parenting yeah. is, you know, watching all these, whatever you call it, shorts, reels, TikToks, all the different yes. short form media. Yes. Um, it is definitely doom scrolling and like the gateway to hell, but it is incredibly engaging, you know, know, especially it's quite the competition to YouTube in general or especially long form content, especially TikTok. TikTok is TikTok's taking over the world. It's pretty addictive. Um, hopefully YouTube being, consu- you know, we're partners of YouTube and, you know, yeah, YouTube is much more important to us than oh, TikTok. Yeah. I, I don't, don't I, care I don't about care, TikTok, but I, care less. but I can't deny their product and, yeah. and the addictiveness in the yep. nature of that is, but I'm watching these videos of some of these kids who apparently have watched too many videos about telling the police they don't need to do stuff or whatever it is. And I'm like, wow, these kids think they can do anything and you're watching it. And sometimes they just run amok and act crazy. And every now and then they get the bull, you know, they get, they get the horns. Right. Oh, yeah. And you see this and you're like, man, but it's, they end up getting the Prince treatment. Oh, like yeah. that dog did when it, when it's like, you know, some kid I was watching, it was like the guy runs right up on this guy for no reason. And the guy just like, just smacks the crap out of him and knocks him out and i'm like bro that might have been the best thing for you man oh yeah i saw one where this 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 cop has this person it's like tall and then he the guy tries to or the girl tries to kick his leg and the cop slams the person like on his face on the concrete it's yeah. just did you see that one no no i just experienced oh. something like that in my own life so i i kind of have a feeling of what that's like but you you know you live in a, in a make-believe world and it's like you're here, oh, you know, I'll do what I want to do. And then somebody like a cop is like, no, you do what I tell you to do. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it. like the jail is full of people that thought they were going to do something to the cop. And then the cop yeah. is like had other ideas. Right. So yeah. it is just it is funny. But I do have to say it is unbelievably addictive. And um, I think shorts are addictive, too. I think YouTube's working on the algorithm to make it more custom tailor. I just think that because YouTube has such knowledge based stuff. I know they have garbage on there too, but it's harder for us to compete. Like some of the more educational stuff against, you know, TikTok brawls and or TikTok, the most engaging, entertaining way to do it. 10 times more than reels. 10 times more than why? What is it about it? The music, the, um, they, they just incorporate, they they have the creative people behind it. You think, think so? TikTok? Yes. I mean, it's it has to be all in the algorithm, right? Or is it even there's actual creative, funny? Yes, it's in the algorithm. They give them the music. They promote this. Then it becomes this trend. Go to Reels and go to TikTok, or go to Shorts and go to TikTok. You, it's so much more entertaining. But they're using a lot of the same things. And yeah, you'll you'll see crossover, yeah. but you'll it's not even it's not even close. Yeah. But don't you think it's oh I think that they are much more on the like primal um 
and maybe just my feed is more like violent than other types of things. And TikTok's not violent. Though. I think they know what they know what you're into. I mean, they they all know what you're into. Yeah, they know. There's something just funnier about TikTok. It's just funnier. The people there's something. And I give some inside baseball for people that don't know on the channel. It's just really funny. So we're already doing inside baseball. Right now, so, so yeah, this is inside baseball. But what's really funny about um, uh, like this channel? By the way, is, don't leave TikTok. Only watch my shorts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're not creating any. In, don't go to TikTok. anything for TikTok. But it is funny. So on my TikTok feed, and I, you know, on every feed I have, there's always this like police refusal kind of things oh, like, I, I have i'm not going to do what you tell me or like a fourth amendment whatever uh whatever amendment i'm not i'm not, it's fine yeah you know, whatever you know what i'm talking about but like if you look at our um if you look at the channel right it shows like what your people watch and stuff and oh. it shows like police refusals and all kinds oh, on of our channel yeah so like the actual people yeah. that watch it it'll say like the, the people that watch us are, are also way into like yeah police refusal and but it's so Some funny because you're thinking dog training stuff and they're just built like that. It's can we really look funny. right now live yeah. on there. Go ahead. I don't remember how to look at that. I had a funny thing, too. I can bring it up, too. Here. But I had a fun. I'll bring it on my phone. I don't trust. Okay. He's going to bring up what other what you guys also look at. Yeah. If you wanted to know. It is so funny. Here's what I'm going to talk about. On my feed on, I think, Reels or something, Instagram. This last week, I, I watched one video and then it started showing me a ton, which I hated mm -hmm. of these pit bulls, like killing horses. And like one came across, it yeah. got a seal and the lady's trying to pull the seal out of this pit bull's mouth and it killed this. It was a sea lion, a baby sea lion. And one guy's on the rocks right. going drown the dog. And the lady goes, I'm not. It just killed a seal. The lady goes, I'm not drowning my dog. And he's like, no, don't like. Kill, kill your it. dog, just put your dog's head, head under water. Yeah. And there was another lady on the other side of the seal trying to pull it out of his mouth. Seal's dead. Sea lion's dead. Dog killed the sea lion. It's like a horrible. Where was this? Like La Jolla it was, or something? Yeah, it was somewhere on the coast of this country because they spoke perfect English. Killed a freaking seal. Then it starts showing me in this country and others, these dogs attacking horses and like latching under their throat. Bro, this is out of control. Yeah. Now, am I seeing everyone in the world? No. Am I seeing a lot though because it got on my stupid feed? Yes. Yeah. But like this, this happening more than two times in this world, a pit bull killing wild animals that are trying to live their life and a horse trying to pull a cart and a pit bull latching onto its throat and nobody being able to get off is too, too many. But we don't get mad at the pit bull. Just the same I do. way we don't, get, we don't get mad at the uh, healer, right? I mean, it's, you know, don't get mad at the healer for healing. We breed these dogs to do a certain thing. We it's don't. It's our job, but it's our job to intervene when the dog's doing something crazy and be like, hey, I'm intervening and I'm stopping this. Stop. I, enough. This is, is enough. complicated. It is enough. I'm only going to share some of this stuff because it actually is too inside baseball. Okay. People will like, here's the people here, will know everything. Here's about what us. other people are watching. It's you guys are what, watching what your audience watches. All right. This is uh, the pod. What? Okay. Here, here. So bad pod. Police what do you watch? Secrets. When suspects try to seduce cops, uh, you guys are a bunch of perverts. Yes. Uh, uh, whoa, I'm not going to read that. Um, it's bad. I'm not reading. This is what our audience is watching. This is what they're watching. This is what you guys are watching. Although not necessarily a pod. This is I the I do broader... like the police when they try to I have watched a few of those. I can't get enough of the police encounters, but I used to think some of these police folks were because there are people they like they record with their camera and they go, "You know what? Like um you can't record." And I go, "Hey, I support this person's right to, you know, freedom or whatever." But now all these goofballs on like TikTok are don't know what yeah, the hell yeah. they're doing. They're recording too much. Yeah. And I'm like, these guys are a bunch of jackasses. Okay. Uh, bus driver rams uh, just stop oil protesters blockade. Uh -huh. Okay. So we're all about breaking through the pod and the viewers are all about like, not about this nonsense. I don't want to call it the pod specifically. I know because the because pod's very hardcore, unique, and they're their own thing. They're either nothing like the that or they're worse. Beckman's. Yeah, they're probably worse. They're probably worse. Yeah. Interesting. Candace Owens triggers rude woke students. That's not interesting. That's that's, that's our exact audience. That stuff goes on my feed too. <laughs> that's my uh, feed. 
Georgia man shoots at cops Allen, with AK-47. What the hell are these people watching? <laughs> Body camera footage of drug overdose. These are all just I've videos. never seen that in my life. I know, but this is just what like the top Our things people are that watching. I know. It but it's getting... funny when it deviates from my what I'm watching. Look at this is great. You just said pervert. Dude destroys pervert store. All right. So we got some. We like when. This is so weird. Bad people get their store. You store. know what I love about this is this is the insanity of YouTube and just Internet in general. It goes from Rogan and Musk threatened to entitled employee has meltdown. Uh, when told no to oh that's very beckman's pity ish. patiently waits by the fence each morning so that's like a cool dog that's video a dog that makes it. but then it goes 10 last photos of extinct animals like that's so pod related yeah that's animals. isn't that funny all right dominant dog that's what you guys are watching you're watching yeah. a lot of police stuff you're watching so bizarre like what a random group of things to yeah you know yeah, yeah they funny. watch the the people of viewers of this channel watch mostly what me and you watch I don't know for why the most I watch part. it though. Maybe everyone watches that stuff. Maybe like my yeah, mom yeah, yeah. It's not stuff. like some the algorithm is like so different. I mean, it is different, but like you know, I mean, I think it's a simple. I think the algorithm is a simple, and I've watched all the Mr. B stuff, but I think the algorithm is simple. Is it knows how long you're watching every single thing, and yeah. then it has it all categorized, and then just slowly, you know, when you click off something that you don't like, it goes all right. Don't recommend that, right? Yeah. So it, it's very, it's not. It's you don't have to be a genius to figure out kind of what they're doing. Yeah. Um, do you want to get to a voicemail? Sure. Do you want to play it? You've yeah. never played one before. Do you want to play it? Oh boy. I, I can try find to it bring here. it up here if you want me to. No, I can do it. Um, okay. I I I have heard these. I, I think I heard, heard them, them uh, for a minute and then I I literally have no idea what this says. I don't know how to play this. Okay, ready, guys? Mm -hmm. Let's see what the, this could you, be. You might a have person to play one more time swearing. when it brings it up. That's this fine. Could, this I'm not safe for work, says. as they okay, say. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Yes, hi, my name is I'm Nicole Holly, and I'm located oh, set her name. in New York. I'm just looking at, I have a uh, five-month-old Doberman puppy. This is our first uh, Doberman puppy. Doberman. We had a miniature pincher that passed away in May. Um, who's got some serious uh, resource guarding with our, uh, like, socks, any, you know, any of our uh, clothing items. That's and, common. Uh, and boyfriend got bit a couple times. I am nothing serious, but we're just wondering if uh, we, he's had some training with a trainer that used a prong collar, but we feel that it might be overstimulating him. Yeah, she's not um, wrong. I wondering mm -hmm. if there's any trainers that uh, you would recommend for us or know of any in our area that don't use um, shock collars or prong collars as their training methods. Um, again, my name is Nicole Holly. Nope, don't play that. Oh, okay. whoa, 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 your planner phone number now. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But don't listen, guys. Don't listen. He's playing. We keep talking. We can't let uh, Joel use the technology anymore. It won't um, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Five months is too young for a prong or knee collar. You also know. I'll, I'll say it here. I'll legit. say it here right now. Like, that's a legit voicemail. Like, yeah. you hear that, you're like, there's no doubt that that lady's not lying. That's no, of course. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I get. Do you know the emails and the phone messages I get? I have two phone lines. I have a business one, and then we have this one. Mm -hmm. Um. But for people just wanting to know trainers from all over the country, like I could make it a business mm -hmm. to be like, I'll recommend you and then I'll get like a percentage of the profits, like which I wouldn't program. do. I, yeah, I would just recommend people, but it could be a business um, because I get so many. Um, yeah, I, I'm not into prong or e-collars on young dogs. They, their brain is not formed enough to do it. Yeah. So forget that. Um, I forgot her name. Your boyfriend, five month old Doberman. He shouldn't be biting anybody. The prong could have actually messed him up a little bit and he's all tripped out now. Um, a five month old dog and I don't want to act macho. They can't generally do enough damage, even a Doberman to like for me not to like back that dog down and take my sock from that dog. It's an attitude, right? Uh, yeah. Like the attitude and when to move away. Dog takes a sock. I'll try the, the 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 treat method to drop it a few times. I'll do it the nice way for sure. And then it mm -hmm. just doesn't work, which it's not going to work for the most part because socks and underwear, dogs get nuts. And you can even tell she like paused there because yeah. it, underwear is the other thing that dogs do this with. Yeah. And I'm going to freaking go there and then I'm going to, I'm going to find the dog 
and he's going to sit there and he's going to look at me with his sock in the mouth. He's going to try to get away and I'm going to block him. And then I'm going to stand there and I'm going to look at the dog. Okay, forget what I'm going to do. How about what you're going to do? Or this lady. And I'm going to stand there and I'm going to look at the dog and we're going to have a waiting game because I don't want to get bit, but I'm not terribly worried about getting bit by a five-month-old dog. And we're going to have a waiting game. And I'll say, we can sit here and stare at each other all day, dog. And that dog is 95% of the time, he's going to be in the corner and I'm going to be staring at him and he's going to go, the hell's going on? Why is this guy just staring at me? And then he's going to probably go like this and go mm -hmm. and spit that thing out. At that point, I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of go, hey, and I'm going to, because the minute I reach down, my face is near his, I have to get the sock. So I'm either going to put my foot on it and back it away, or I'm going to go, go. Then I'm going to go get the sock and then we'll do this next time. But I haven't talked about that much, but that staring game, the dog just kind of gets bored yeah. and they also get tripped out at the newness of what you're doing. Cause you're not doing the same thing you always did, which is chase the dog and then go grab a treat and then, and then reach down and they growl and then you take your hand away. Cause you're scared. Like you gotta break the pattern and I'll just stand there and I'll just look at the dog until the dog just kind of goes like, you know, kind of looks away and then I don't, I, yeah. It's part of that attitude, right? And I think, yeah. um, I think maybe for the gal who left the voicemail, um, Beckman dog training space resource guarding, there was a podcast on it. There was a, sh I think we pulled a piece from the podcast specifically for a different, we oh, did a yeah. different video. So there's another video on that. You've done like other, a month ago. you've done other ones in the past about it. So I would definitely, um, do that, like look at what was said on that podcast about resource guarding and other videos you've done on it because we address some of that directly. Yeah. Um, that might be worth looking at. And then I also thought the thing about staring is interesting Yeah. because I've done that with my cats. I know I always talk about my cats, but, um, I'm surprised how long they'll hold a stare for like unbelievable amounts of time. Um, it's like, like a game and, um, you know, it's even like a fun staring contest. Like when you're a kid, it's like how, how long will you stare yeah. and not give up? And it's like, it gets insane. You know, yeah. you're just like, you're it's like a test of wills, right? You're yeah. showing like, I'll do this all day, man. That's you're all doing, you're saying. The problem is you're doing with a cat who can, who, who, who stare more than dogs. Yeah. They'll stare for it and they'll creep and they don't take their eyes off. Dogs are not like that. Yeah. They're not. So like, you're, you're, you have a challenge. Yeah. You're like 40 minutes. This one's pretty long or oh. it's about, the, but, but they, listen, they called the podcast. So they get their, they get it they read get and luck. they get their, their questions answered. It's not guaranteed, but I mean, yeah. Fire yeah it's away. not guaranteed. Yeah. All right. Another, I don't know what this person is going to say. They'll yeah. probably give their name and number and I'll probably play it on here. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, Joel, I have a question about dealing with neighbors who have dogs with behavior. issues like barking, charging the fence, jumping on the fence, lunging on leash lock. Um, I live in a neighborhood with very small yards. And this past year, like several people have moved in with dogs who bark all the time Ooh. and a few that jump on the fence and stuff like that. Um, and I've been in the neighborhood for six years and it's honestly been the best dog community I ever lived in. And so it's like disappointing that suddenly it's so much worse. And I'm a trainer and it would be really easy, in my opinion, to teach these dogs some of the you know, small behavior changes that they need. But nobody wants a guy to knock on their door and tell them the barking is an issue. He's or, right about that. He's right. You know, yeah. Just cold approach them and try to help them fix a behavior problem. No one wants that. Uh, I tried talking with three different households about it as politely as possible. And, you know, genuinely not trying to be pussy or anything, just expressing an issue. And they all basically brushed me off and was just like, they just say it's dogs being dogs. They don't care. Like they don't they seem pretty inconsiderate about it. I'm just curious, how do you address people who don't see behavior problems as problems? It's always easier when someone comes to you yeah. acknowledging a problem and looking for a yeah. solution. But like, how do you do with people who just don't see the problems for what they are? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. All yeah. right. Welcome to your world, man. Yeah, that was a good uh, that I, I hadn't heard that before. And that was a good question. Hard question. He's so right. I've five times in my life, in my dog training career, given unsolicited dog training advice. It's never gone well. Ever. Almost any advice. Just... Almost any advice. Yeah. What, um, ma'am, you should do your hair like this. 
Like it's like a personal affront to them if you give them advice without it being solicited. It goes over like a turd in the punch bowl. Yeah. You know? So his problem is walking down the street and all these dogs barking at the fence. That's what I got, right? His or him in his house and the dogs barking at the fence. Unsolicited dog training advice. Um I don't do it. Uh yeah. but I'm also not in a neighborhood where let me try to think if if I've ever had a na neighbor situation, I think you have to build the relationship with the person before you even broach how they should train their dog better. Like you have to have a personal relationship and then it comes up that you're an authority. Then it comes up. You can't tell him you're an authority because he's an authority. He's a dog trainer. He knows way more than those dog owners do, but he can't tell him that. What if he's force free? He's not. Okay. I can tell. He's not he's not calling me if he's force free. He has kids or no? Uh that guy, no, he's too young. Okay. Just checking. I have no idea. He has he, a young family. Hey, put in the comments below what, what the uh living situation is. Yeah, guy. Let's see if we're right. Let's see if you're let's right. Let's guess his neighborhood. Small I thought North Park. He when didn't I first heard sound it. like he's from the East Coast. I'm gonna say Washington. No, he's from uh, small backyard. Well, the, he's from Utah. Utah. They have big backyards in Utah. Yeah, but he lives in a newer development. Oh, okay. No family. He's in Utah. He has young kids, I think. Okay, I think he doesn't. Yeah, maybe he would have mentioned that. Um, maybe not. Yeah, you're. You could. All be right, right. He's got a comment. What his life situation is, and we need to know everything about his life. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you gotta you gotta build rapport with people, and then you gotta offer. Then they gotta know you're an expert. Then you gotta offer them advice, and they might receive it. That's a hard one. I don't know. I'm, I'm I don't know what to tell them. I think it's more of a spiritual solution, which is that sometimes those it's dogs bark. About it. Sometimes those dogs bark, and it really it really bothers you. And other times the dogs are barking, and you're just moving on down the road. It's like what we talked about today when we were just talking about YouTube stuff in general and uh, we're kidding about like critic YouTube criticism and you're like, yeah, you know, oh, or I was saying sometimes talking on the phone. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people uh, say things and you're just like, what'd you say? And other times you're just like, bro, I don't care. Okay. What anyone says. Can I tell you my problem with criticism on um, social media? So I, I had a video that went my biggest video on Instagram. I just repurposed the pit bull video from two weeks ago on YouTube and I put it on Instagram and I went up like 5,000 followers. It's got 200,000 views, this mm -hmm. video, which is big for Instagram for my Instagram. Cause I don't ever post. Yeah. And it's these loser people. I don't, for one, some reason I don't care about it on YouTube You're just as much, it. but like Instagram, they don't have a pro listen. If you want to criticize on any platform or in Instagram, that's why I care. YouTube, you can't see a picture or anything. Yeah. Instagram, go to their have a picture out. of yourself. Yeah. Or I imagine you're the biggest loser in the world. Why wouldn't you have a picture of yourself? Yeah. I mean, it's a serious question. It's much more unlikely to have a picture or a profile picture on YouTube than it is on Instagram. Yes. So Instagram, you should have a picture of yourself. If you don't, unless you're a troll, you're a troll loser, right? You That's have pretty a much and true. Still be a, tr a troll loser. So. But if it's you, mm -hmm. you, yes, you still could be. We can see you. We can know that you're not the biggest loser in the world. But you are. Don't you think generally you're a big loser if you have a pretty heavily trafficked, um, heavily trafficked social media page, and you have a fake name and a fake profile picture oh yeah that's true too that's is that common weird. oh yeah oh look on at, instagram even on youtube i see people and i'm like okay this oh, guy's it's got youtube i know but it's like you know i get it if it's if it's some theme and you're into some something but when you're like clearly the troll oh yeah know. yeah people no one care if you're on instagram and you don't have a picture of yourself no one cares about you no one cares. That is a medium to put your pick stupid little yeah. picture in that's that whole, stupid, that was the whole in that circle. That's what it's for. It's like Facebook. That's what you do. If you don't do it, there's a reason you don't do it. Yeah. It's kind of a shame that that is Instagram was created like for pictures to show pictures. Yeah. And show yourself. It's a very narcissistic thing. You're not helping anybody. You just have a picture of yourself. I have a picture of my family and all of them. 
Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know why you told me to take it off, but I'm like, no, that's, that's part of my I don't life. think I told you to take it off on Instagram. It was on YouTube. Yeah, I know. Because, but I didn't tell you to take it off. You had put, um, you had, it was the Beckman logo beforehand. Yeah. And then you change it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that it's bad. I think it was more about, I know why. there's, well, there's two things. There's a brand thing that's just like people see the brand rather than the family. And then there's also just the weirdos that it's like, no, I know I wouldn't, I prefer not to have that weirdo stuff. And now that there's almost what we're coming up on 500,000 subscribers, it's getting to new. Eyes. Yeah. Um, you want to like, I don't have a lot in comp. You want to argue with me about dog training and you don't have children. You maybe, dogs. maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't argue with me. Yeah. I mean, the thing I, is, I, is, I realize that's a controversial statement and I realize people don't agree don't with me hate it. Yeah. and people that, and people that don't have kids go, that makes no sense to me. I get it. A lot of things in life don't make sense to you because you don't have children. Yeah. There, it's not just about this. We are not even, we're very far. We don't think the same on many things because you don't have children. If you're a grown man or woman without children, we don't, we're very different people with very different views of this world and very different views of the future and very different views of what's important in life. There's something wild about having, you know, having the kids makes you think like, okay, one day I will be dead and they will be carrying the torch. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's that need there. The work is never done because never done. You if you always, don't have kids, you're, you're constantly like, trying to prepare them for challenges in the future, doing the right thing. Yeah. Right. And, um, the doing the right thing, um, seems to be a big piece of what Beckman dog training is all about because, you have to be, it's so difficult to see some of the people that I feel like are not honest with themselves about their dog. And, uh, you know, every time I talk to somebody who says something about why they, you know, oh, I heard you're doing this thing with Joel and they're, I have, to, well, my dog isn't, isn't the problem. Like it's always an excuse and it's a not taking responsibility and being honest about the situation. And I'm like, just like this guy who called like those people are never going to rectify because most of them probably don't think their dog is a problem. They might mm. think the neighbor's dog is a problem more than their dog or their mm. dog's good compared. No one wants to hear that they have a bad dog because they feel like that's on them that they're not doing right. So mm. it's like just the same way you think you'd do well telling people that they have bad kids. Good luck with that. Yeah. Tell someone that they have bad, uh, bad, oh, well, you know, bad behavior. I children. tell people they have bad dogs all the time and they totally listen. Yeah, but they're also paying you and they're showing it's up crazy door. though like i'm nice to them and they it. would actually take me not being like it's kind of like what, what who was it like howard stern years ago or something like if he kind of made fun of you as kind of like a badge of honor or something mm -hmm. it's kind of like people are like tell me like i want to hear it i need to hear it they like know deep down and they won't accept it from other people but they'll accept it from me you're you're in a different position though because yeah they are paying you money and showing up in your doorstep and saying, I need yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Versus, yeah. hey, I think your kid is just And they know amazing. I have enough integrity to like not do it for the wrong reason. So there is a thing in dog training of blaming the client for everything. Everything. Because it the dog trainer can skirt their responsibility to train the dog. Now, your point is like, well, it always is the owner. It's not always the owner. It it. it dogs that pitbull video that we, we just talked about he says if you watch the whole video like minute 10 it's it was posted two weeks ago on sunday he says um he rescued this dog and then he goes well i believe it's it's everything's my fault essentially what he said and i looked at him and i go look at your dog bro you like got your dog as an adult from a foster you are doing the right thing your dog is jacked up i disagree with you your dog is jacked up yeah, but ultimately it all comes back to your sphere of influence, your own circle of what you can control inside this chair. And uh, just like, well, my wife is doing this. My wife is doing that. It's like, really? Who married her? Where'd you, you know, who, who adopted the dog? Well, that's what I said. I go, you're responsible because you got this breed 
Like you, you took that on, like you're mm -hmm. responsible for that. Like that's what I said, but he can't be responsible for changing the dog in a few months from this insane dog who has this certain brain. It's like, but he is responsible though. Right? Oh, he's responsible it's for funny, it, like, but it's a very, very difficult thing to do. How about we say yeah, it that way? Yeah. He got, he got, I mean, whether he even got in over his head or not. Right. I mean, either way he made a decision and now the consequences could be very bad. And, and okay, well, we're talking unexpected. about two different things. No, I know, I know. I mean, it's not, it's yeah. to be expected that not everyone is going to, um, you know, people do things, right? You maybe people foster kids and stuff and they bring them in, they go, Holy crap, this is may, way more work than I thought. But it's still noble to, to pick up a pit bull who's like probably going to get put to sleep and you're like, I'm going to go save him. But there are more difficult cases and i think just the same way with breeding or with uh herding dogs and some of these other types of dogs that in the hardcore working dogs that people just don't realize like whoa like a malinois yeah this is yeah i agree i didn't how how would they know how would they know that it's that difficult that there's that level of commitment to getting a dog sometimes where it needs to be yeah i mean i i, I don't know i don't know what the normal person sees on their videos or the research they do before a dog I think the Malinois thing is a little different because I think they actually do know. The pit bull thing, you go to rescue a dog and half of them or 80% of them are pit mixes. And you're like, if I want to leave with a dog, like the odds are I got to pick one of these. Like getting a full bred Malinois is like way more conscious than going to rescue mm -hmm. a dog and all the dogs are this certain breed. Yeah. Well, you don't have a choice. Yeah. Adopting a purebred you probably would did some research to figure out what type of yeah, breed or you buying wanted. a purebred. Yeah. 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 I guess more buying it. Right. So remember, um, we did get some complaints about the shortness of the podcast. Uh, we will have to get it a little longer, but not too long for the folks, but, um, we still have to cover breed of the week. We still and comments. Have, we still have to address comments and apology. And we still have to do apologies. Um, dude, I posted this Instagram, on or maybe no on instagram uh and i put my leg up on the lady's house where i went and yeah. i and i said so i went i i did a video on youtube at the in-home session i put my leg on her hearth many people commented what are you doing you can't put your foot up there blah 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 blah, blah. it was pretty funny i liked it i then posted a short on instagram and i said after many months of contemplation I want to say I'm sorry for this, right? This mm -hmm. goes to the apology segment. And everyone took me seriously. They're like, some people are like, it's really good that you said you're sorry. I'm like, I have three kids. You think I'm thinking about the heart, the foot I put, the foot I put on her hearth? Do you know, do you know, um, it's so funny. There's a husband and wife that own that, that yeah. place. Yeah. And obviously I have connection and, uh, yeah, you to know, make, help yeah. to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. The male, the, 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 well, the it sounds, sounds terrible. The man of the house. Yeah. Uh, I was told said Joel can put his foot there if he wants to. Hey, you didn't know that. I didn't case tell you that. Did I? No, you didn't tell I, me I'll that. I'll show you the text. But what afterwards. did she think? Um, oh, and no one cares. Nobody there cares. Oh, Only good. people on YouTube care cares. about stuff. So nobody that's no so one funny cares. because her voice did change when right when I put it up there. And one commenter was like, You can even tell her voice changed when you put your foot up there. I was doing a little man spreading though. Yeah. Which I don't think I'm a big guy. I don't do that on purpose. Yeah. But I did it. People make mistakes, man. Yeah. So yeah. are you apologizing or no? Oh, I apologized. I said after months of contemplation and thinking about my life, I'm sorry for putting my foot up here. And people were like, you should be sorry. I'm really glad you apologized. <laughs> they thought I was serious. People, you kind of trolled people. I have three kids. I'm not thinking about my foot on a hearth. For three months yeah no i mean it's so funny it, it lives on though but it was funny it was funny right and that's funny that the guy said it's funny you can poke uh Does funny he, so he likes me that guy yeah oh or he cool. just said you can or whatever put it, you can put your foot up wherever you want that's nice of that guy i, I like, like that guy yeah i think it was funny pretty funny so yeah. i forgot to tell you that actually that yeah you funny. did um yeah so there's that um couple things uh can we get into breed of the week yeah um i want to do the traditional um, you know, I read the comments. There's some good ones. There's always, uh, there's some people that say that I like to stir up a little bit of chaos, especially with the yeah, force free folks. Yeah. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt about that. 
Um, anyone who knows me knows that. But what I would say is I want to continue to do the Conor McGregor mo- m- apology, right? Of I want to apologize to absolutely nobody. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Double champ does what the people F- actually wants. think. We're our apology segments real too. Yeah. Well, maybe it is. I know we're laying the the, the, the dry humor on you pretty thick, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. So um, let's let's be a little bit more observant. Um, so I'll apologize for um, my my hierarchy of trainers. I called the lower level, which was the reaction video and the talking people trainers. I probably called them like, you know, not nice, you know, kind of mm-hmm. went at their uh, integrity and their manhood or their womanhood a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I'll apologize to them. I mean, I think ultimately there's no need to apologize for anything because when you're doing a YouTube video for five minutes, you can put a pretty polished thing together. But when you do 24, uh, podcast for almost two hours at a pop, you're going to get what you're going to get, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We just, you're going to just find out who yeah. the real Joel is and the real, Eric yeah, is we go after like Europe. That. We go after, yeah. we go after everyone. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just what it is. Okay. So anything else on that? Cause if not, we'll slide right into the old, uh, B O T W as the people in the comments like, uh, oh, to say, yes. Um, so breed of the week, there is two of them. I don't know if I can find the other one. The first one I only want to do because the person was um, thinking that I was not going to do it. Oh. And so that one was the old, um, you know, basically Lenny Design said, uh, I'm not holding my breath uh, that my uh, or getting my hopes up about uh, Shih Tzu for Breed of the Week. So I felt like, let's Bro. throw that one. Um, and then Off Grid Dog says, careful what you wish for. Laugh out loud that Chihuahua breed of the week was epic and that's oh, really? obviously sarcasm but. so shih tzu yeah um <clears throat> shih tzu little chinese dog chinese i think so i think they were meant to be oh. in the apron of the emperor or that's the story as the it spelling goes. actually makes sense right? and uh he'd like come out and attack i don't know if that's true but that's the story i heard about shih tzus i think or maybe that's some other little breed. I think that was a Shih Tzu maybe in the video that we played at the beginning of this podcast that went after Bosco. You guys, there are better trainers to talk to about. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a little Asian dog. That's a really snazzy Shih Tzu right there. That's a real Shih Tzu. That thing. Is yeah, wild. I probably trained five of those things. No, they never look like that. But that thing looks. You guys, crazy. I'm not going to. I'm. I can't talk breed of the week. When I've trained five of them, I can't do it. This is a honest podcast where I'm not going to give you what I've heard about them. I'm going to give you my actual experience with them. And I haven't trained enough Shih Tzus. The name Shih Tzu in Mandarin directly translates Mandarin. to little lion, an animal considered sacred in Buddhist religion. So yeah, Isn't that interesting? I haven't trained enough. I haven't trained enough little dogs. Mm-hmm. People don't bring me little dogs. They just don't. Yeah, they're I wish less they would to them and to to others probably. Yeah, I wish they would. They're easier. I always think about is that was that Dumb and Dumber with the uh, breeding between the the bulldog and the Shih Tzu. I just thought of that when you said Shih Tzu too. Yeah, yeah, and they call it a. Yeah, that's yep, great. That was Dumb and Dumber. That was Dumb and Dumber, right? Mm-hmm. I I have so much love for that movie. Oh yeah, it's great. It really is good. Um, now maybe you saw it in the comments, but the second one was I did. It was like an Irish something. Oh, I didn't see that. I saw like a caucus or a... No, it wasn't that. Um, I'm super bummed now because... You can't find it. Yeah, I forgot what it was. It was like an Irish... Irish better. No, it was like an no. Irish collie or some weird thing. The person's yelling at the screen right now like, no, it's Irish. Uh, they were just waiting for the breed of the week. I thought I might have screenshot it. On pins then... and needles for my assessment of some random Irish dog and they're not going to get it now. I'm actually playing the prior episode, like an episode of the podcast while the podcast is happening. That's mm. that's deep. That's crazy. So Shih Tzu was breed of the week and uh, I know nothing about them. Yeah, but it sounds like you don't even want to know anything about them. Oh, that's if you want to tell us what's about them. I mean, they're Chinese. I mean, they're bred and it uh, looks like originating from Tibet. Tibet? Is that how you say that word? P- Tibet. Uh, and believed to be bred from the Pekingese. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is it? Yasa Apso or something? Las Apso. Las yeah. Apso. Yeah, I guess they're all pretty similar. All 10 to 18 ones. year lifespan. Yeah, small dogs just live wow. a long time, which is pretty cool. Eight, eight to 16 pounds. They look like the yeah. males and the females are the same size. Um, that's interesting. Um, etymology. Okay, lion. We went over that. Um, I have comments. They're cool. Yeah, um, they're fine. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, okay. Why don't you kick off a couple comments? I've got plenty. Right All right. I like here. this one. I have three comments. I like this one. This is from MAIA. I'd love to hear what were the biggest mistakes that Joel made and how and why he made them training animals that were also the most valuable lessons for him to become who he is. Example, and she gives her, my biggest mistake was correcting my puppy too soon, too intensely, which mm -hmm. is a good example of a big mistake that you would regret. I thought about this because I saw this. I have two somewhat regrets. I thought about it really deeply and I couldn't really come up with a lot of training animal mistakes. And I, but I have two, one with exotics and one with dogs. The exotics one was me and a lot of young trainers are relatively cavalier when it comes to dangerous animals. So I was training a tiger, a blood draw from their tail. Cats, you can train blood draws from their tail. What does a blood draw mean? Taking blood. Husbandry. From their tail? Yeah. And I would, the, the, she was food aggressive. So you'd feed her at this end, you know, eight feet away where her head is while you take her tail and you would train a blood draw, but she was super, she was food aggressive. And so I would have to put my hand in the cage like a little bit to try to get her tail because her tail can't just come out of the cage. Yeah. And one of my staff members came up and she goes, you shouldn't do that. And I was like, oh, I was like thinking to myself, like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're awesome. It was freaking stupid, dude. Yeah. Like dumb young trainer, get my arm ripped off. Like, and then with killer whales, you need the older trainers to come up to you and go, listen, be careful doing A, B, and C mm -hmm. because they've seen it. They've been around aggression. They've seen this stuff <laughs> until you see it. You know it's capable. They're called a killer whale for a reason. Obviously, very safe, and you know it can happen. But things fade, right? Remember, you see mm -hmm. this in society all the time, and and people do dumb things, and then uh, and then they get woken up when something happens, or something happens to a friend, or and that's what it's like in the animal world. Like you'll hear like, oh, so and so got attacked by a or killed by an elephant, or yeah. like when Dawn died in Orlando, friend, good friend of mine, the train that died in Orlando, Sea World. Sea World that that woke us all up, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah, <laughs> the biggest wake up in the history of wake ups. And you know, none of us would have ever, if anyone gotten back in the water with whales, which I didn't work there at the time, I'd already left. It would have been different for every one of my training friends. But we knew it could happen. But until it happened, so I was a little cavalier as a young trainer. But I but I came out fine. Yeah, I saw that comment. I thought it was good. And but then you said the word husbandry. Can you get into that for me? It's just the um, husbandry would be defined as um, um, like behaviors that are to are are for the care of the animal. How does that relate to the blood draws, husband? injections, presenting feet and elephants for nail trimming, anything that is for the care of them. You know, I've heard Training of yeah, animal the, husbandry, right? That's yeah. where you normally hear about. It. So how yeah. does that relate to the word husband? I have no idea. There must be something connected. There, there, you think there would be taking care of or something. Yeah. yeah. Taking care of. I don't know. And then the other thing I would uh, say is Prince. Prince did not have kind of the softer upbringing that Bosco had. And I sometimes feel a little bad for Prince he kind of came in during a busier time and Bosco had sort of a more a more chill couple years to kind of grow up. Prince had to kind of grow up real quick. Well, Prince had the three kids in the house. Three right? kids, super busy dog training business. Yeah, you were at, you were a ways down the road by that point. Yeah, right? so those are the two. Yeah, that, I actually saw that. I, I thought that was comment. a really, really good one. I have actually a few more. Yeah, you do a couple, then I'll jump into that. Okay, so... Um, about the trainers that don't want to work with aggressive. Okay. This is for last week on my hierarchy of dog trainers about the trainers that don't want to work with aggressive or extreme dogs. 
I think it is fear and lack of trust in their own abilities. I've noticed a pattern in good dog trainers. They are all very dominant, self-secure, and rational people, not only with dogs, with people too. It takes guts, intelligence, feeling for animal behavior, and a rational mind to take on the bad guys and get them balanced. Starting out, it is a scary thought sometimes. As for training your own dog, kind of a difference. Okay, I don't want to get into this whole mm -hmm. second part. Yeah. So I agree with this person in a lot of ways, not only with dogs, but with people as well. Watch watch Larry Crone. Okay, a YouTube guy. He probably does other things. Watch Larry Crone and just tell me that he isn't just a balanced human being. Mm. Watch Cabral. And tell me he isn't just a normal guy that you'd want to have a beer with or Larry Crown. Mm -hmm. And then watch some of the force free folks. What about the guy? That... And and tell me how you would be like, yeah, no, I don't want to hang out with that guy. Yeah. Or that girl. And then watch Larry Crown. Yeah. Or, or Cabral, or I could name others, right? Maybe Caesar Milan. He's sort of transcended. Caesar Milan, you know, maybe if you met him, you'd, he's a big star. And be, being a big star changes you. Yeah. But, but not necessarily for the bad. Not right. necessarily for bad, but man, it's hard to, it's hard to stay. I've never met Susan Milan, but it's hard to stay like, just like normal everyday Joe when you have transcended your industry. Can I it, met Kelly Slater. He's yeah. not the only surfer that's really transcended. I was very unimpressed. I like that he's, that guy he is was, awesome in the sense that he's really into UFC and jujitsu. Like he's more passionate about that than he is into, into UFC for some or into surfing for some reason. Yeah. And I'd never, never seen anyone in my life that is at that level that argues with people in the comments of Instagram and Facebook. Kelly Slater? You wouldn't even believe it. Like you'll see stuff and it will be 47 uh, comments back and forth with some random person, not about surfing, about like oh, really? jujitsu oh, and that's UFC. Cool. Well, I like him. I like him now. Yeah, I did not like him. He's supposed to be like the most competitive person in the world. He is. That's what I've heard. Yes, he he's Michael Jordan. Yeah, they they're different human beings. I'd have that guy. In the Michael podcast. Jordan, Kelly. Oh, you would. Just I'm not, I'm saying I'm not. I mean, I could care less about surfing at all. Like I would. I mean, there's certain people like I would get pumped if we had Caesar Milan, and I did want to throw this out to the podcast. Very little chance of this happening, but um, if anyone out there knows how to get a contact with that guy, yeah. drop it in the contact in the con. Um, I've actually re reached out a couple of pretty awesome people. Um, we're not doing the, the guests all the time, but we definitely want to have interesting guests that we think are interesting that we think you'll enjoy. Um, but I did try to reach out. I didn't even try to reach out. I started to do research to effectively reach out to yeah, Caesar yeah. and I couldn't find much of anything. And I mean, I spent a couple hours on it. I was like, I'm done. He's a busy man. This. Yeah, it was too much. I was just like, this is, I'm not spending my Sunday or Saturday, whatever, doing yeah. tracking down who his man, I knew who his management team is, but if anyone yeah. knows, knows how to get a hold of him, drop it in the comments. Someone contacted me, I told you this years ago, and saying, like, Caesar Milan, I'm so and so to him, manager, brother in law, or something. I don't know. And he said, Caesar Milan really appreciated you for your list of dog trainers. That's pretty cool. I told you that. Yeah. So we would be very excited about, um, or I know I would be very excited about Caesar um, yeah, being on the podcast. Yeah, just for his life. Yeah, and so we we have a lot of love for that guy. I think. I do. How do you not? Yeah. He's oh, I know stud. people who don't, but yeah. um, they're... You know where um, they can go, right? Yeah, dude. You don't, you don't think that guy's interesting? Like, you're crazy, Plus man. his upbringing is super cool. Um, Plus, anyone who, who they've tried to just destroy... They just they he became the the biggest target for for people and then comes out of it like you mm -hmm. you have to respect that person. Did, did I ever tell you that my I think I might have told you this my friend Justin who's a he's a Mexican guy he uh, he was um, I showed him this dog whisperer like fifteen plus years ago yeah I was like look at this guy how awesome is this and I think it was back when we had like some type of cable. And um, I'm showing him and his dad is from Tecate uh, in Mexico. And uh, I was like, look how good this guy is with these dogs. He's in um, Caesar was going Ch -ch -ch, like to the dog, like yeah. to kind of catch it off guard. And he was like, what? He's like, every Mexican knows how oh, to yeah, do that. that. Remember that? Yeah, that's funny. But it is. Um, 
either way, the guy is a super stud and, um, yeah, so it'd be cool to have him on the podcast, but yeah, we have to balance everything. And so there's also other interesting people, I think that are dog slash animal related that we'll get on, but it won't be all the time just because just the logistics is, is tiring. And yeah. maybe one day in the future when we can devote more time to this, we would do it. But uh, so did I answer that, um, that question, um, uh, oh, oh, rational people. Yeah. The, the force or the balance trainers, which I've never understood that label. Yeah, they're generally um, people. They got kids. They got lives. They're not activists. You know, they got other things. All right. This was also from last week, the pod wildlife biologist here. Okay. I, I have screenshotted almost every one of these, I think, just so you know. And I've always thought that the long canine teeth of the Similodon cats, that was the saber tooth tiger. We talked about that last week, mm. were indicative of them feeding on huge animals, probably scavenging carpuses. And those long canines were used by the cat, plunging them into the belly of say a mammoth and using powerful neck and shoulder muscles to pull the teeth and cut open the body cavity to get at the internal organs. The sonic can't uh, sim smilodon canines I've seen have sharp sometimes slightly serrated edges that would help with that. So I said the saber tooth tiger canines are for sexual selection and I'm going to stick to that. Mm -hmm. She is saying they are for, because they're not good for killing because you can't even open your mouth all the way. Yeah. She's saying they're good for scavenging so and gorgeous. ripping. That also makes sense. But the truth is nobody knows the answer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go with my original answer, which is sexual selection, which means that the lady saber tooth tigers say, oh, look at the big teeth on that guy. I like him. I want to breed with him. She's saying it's an advantage due to getting more food. That's also probably true. And they could probably both be true. Well, I like right. The, the, the big antlers. Mm -hmm. Good for defense. Also good for getting chicks. Yeah. I mean. Right. Just like size in general, right? Like they're looking for um, the most or like the in elk cases, right? They're looking for the most durable, strong, you know, dominant male that they can mate with. And so, yeah, if the, you know, if he has like these little tiny antlers, they're kind of like, eh, yeah, he's like a little suspect, right? Yep. It's yep. Like having a small bank account. You don't want to have that. Um, but so I think it's interesting yeah. that you bring all this stuff. You don't. Up. That's um, also in my feed is all this. Like this whole thing right now of like what apparently like, I guess because social media, it's like every woman wants like a guy over six foot and makes hundred thousand. And now they're breaking it down like on all these videos. I think people have seen this. this isn't just my feed, right? They're breaking it down where it's like, yeah, you're you're looking for one percent of the uh, population. And and then like people will call these women out and be like, but you're like average at best. Like yeah. what makes you think you can get this? And the women are like, what? Yeah, like I, they're all surprised. I just saw that it's one so funny. with Jordan Peterson, where he is like really or with old. Pearl. Yeah, but this one was really old, and and she was like saying, "Well, the the you know the patriarchy, the men dominate, and all that." And he was oh, like that's saying, the, that's "This is best. like a tiny." He's like, "This is the amount of men who are holding that wealth is like a tiny percentage yeah. of these guys." And he's like, "For every you know, you don't you don't think about the plumbers and the construction workers yeah, and all yeah, these yeah. other people, right?" So it's wild. How about equity? in uh the people who go down in the sewers yeah you don't want none of you that. want all the equity yeah how about equity in bricklaying yeah he also talks how about, about tarring that. roofs in phoenix yeah no he talks about um you want, let's you get equity there yeah you don't like careful what you wish for with the equity because it is not you know those are the jobs and he also kind of says that, like america and he's canadian right but it's like other places that i guess western world is you know there are a lot of men that do a lot of really bad jobs that help to move, you know, to get us truck driving. I mean, all these Tarring things. roofs in Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, man, even out here, like Southern California, I'm just giving it an yeah, extreme example. But it is extreme, but it is true, right? Things still yeah. have to get done. And uh, there's a lot of hardworking people. So I want to get into this if I can, because yeah. this is pretty fun. Did I answer that last question? Oh, the saber tooth tiger. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Um, but it, it's along the same, same lines, but I did want to comment that I think it's fun that we can, you know, have a sense of humor, but also recognize that sometimes there are not always the right answer to everything. And sometimes that was a perfect example of 
not everything is, you know, like even with science, like this is the way it is and you need to believe what we tell you. And that's the last word of oh, it, yeah. especially with like extinct species. We're like, or, and I, it was making me think about this kind of draft, this uh, animal draft kind of idea. Oh, which is, I did um, an animal draft. My son, I talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, well, they, they dig into it. Uh, oh, really? In the, yeah, in the comment. Oh. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, I think that a, um, I think that a um, gorilla would win, you know? And you start right. thinking about this. But it's also funny how in life, um, and I feel like I'm a bit of an expert from my UFC background, right? No, I'm half joking there. But when you, you know, you would watch certain fights and if you, if you lead, you watch the buildup and you'll see that someone will be um, favored 10 to one, right? And everyone goes, everyone knows this guy will always win. Yeah. And then the other guy just knocks him out cold. And, th and then everyone's like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Right. And yeah. so like it, everyone believes it a certain way until they get punched in the face. And right. it turns out that that's not the case. Yeah. And so, and sometimes maybe that guy fights him a hundred times, but that one time yeah. that, that gorilla gets a hold of that bear or something right, right. and it tears him a new one or is there some okay. reason yep. so you, not just because someone saw a fight of a mountain lion against a gorilla doesn't mean that every time they fight that's what's going to happen yeah. that's part of like the life right um, okay deal so anyways this one is faces of dragon that's uh, i'm already liking this person it looks like a gal in the comment okay as far as fantasy animals picks i'm a former dungeon masters i, I think she's I talking about uh, dungeon and dragon i already like this lady so i'm thinking <laughs> you saying have in the to comments you're a former dungeon master is pretty awesome and she's got to be my age right yeah, yeah you uh this was wait. big when i was a kid dungeon yeah. oh, and Dragons. i think she's older than you i didn't uh, play no it offense. um I, my cousin played or we played with my cousin one time i never understood and that. i was like playing and i'm like where's the game <laughs> like it's a weird you're, game. like rolling dice and stuff uh um, i know he says, so I'm thinking, but I love this comment. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking you have to do this orderly in the campaign. So they have a campaign that goes on. I know most of this from what's that, that show on Netflix, uh, um, with the girl who has the magic powers, uh, her name is like 11 or something, seven or something. Oh, like stranger things, stranger things. They like play this games, right? Oh, I know more about it from those. I have these campaigns and they all get together and play. My players would sometimes enjoy wolves and other wildlife, say with a bobcat or something that, um, uh, the attack would go something like sword versus claw, claw versus bite. There would be three possible attacks to the one attacked by a sword. Each claw um, and bite would have a numerical uh, amount, something like, like four, this. four, eight, and you would roll for an initiative and then to each. So it gives an element of chance, oh right? Uh, if each attack hit, then the roll for damage, one dice, one D four. I don't know what this means. So if you uh, do that with a rhino, they would have two attacks, charge and impale say 10 out of eight, so forth, get some DM dice, which I think is what's DM drink. dungeon master, dungeon master dice and have at it. And then she said, by the way, this is a second comment, by the way, there would be agility type bonuses for cats. You basically add some points to their hit score. I would totally go with a Kodiak bear or grizzly. That's a pretty great comment. It is great because even me not understanding dungeon and dragons, she almost broke it down. It almost sounds scientific to me. Like you would give points and then I don't know why the rolling of the dice, maybe that gives it a chance. There's like a chance element to it. Yeah. That's what I was talking about just now is that, yeah. is that like that fighter that he, he will like, it's a puncher's chance one out of a hundred times. Yeah. Someone throws that punch and it lands. And that's the same way with maybe a, um, it gets right. a hold of him and right, bites right, him. Right, right? right. So that's why you get so the element. He of basically took my, animal fantasy draft that was very non-scientific but fun and me just trying to argue with my son about grizzly versus polar bear or grizzly versus gorilla and us coming up with a winner but we we're just talking to way more scientific not opinion no i like it i mean if you if you created the more proper uh, framework it actually would be fun because it is more like a video game is you're... that the best framework to give the animal draft or is there actually you have the, the dice if you know if you don't have dice then it's not like a game so if you don't have some type of element of chance then it's like well then a tiger always beats a lion and that's ah. it right yeah, otherwise yeah. there's no there's no game it's just i think this you think that versus like what are the powers of this what are the powers of that and then yeah. like what are the what's the likelihood um just the same way that you know who wins a lion or a hyena well a lion wins well what about two hyenas what about three hyenas what about yeah. four what about five so you start get adding variables and it becomes impossible to know and that's why it's like oh 
three you know it's almost what was that game it's like oh now three three more hyenas come rolling rolling down have you ever seen this have we talked about this um that video in africa that was with um i want to say it was a uh, cape buffaloes or something and um I, I want to think I think a lion got a hold of it and there was um it was like a seven to ten minute video and it was wild it was basically I've um, seen a thousand of those but this videos. was probably like the best this one was viral 20 15 20 years ago and it was I forgot the name of it and I can find it for the next oh podcast. and they killed the male lion well no like they took this I think they took a, a small cape buffalo yeah and then all of a sudden like a hundred or some cape oh, buffalo yeah, yeah, come yeah. back I have seen that. you know what I'm talking about and the, the buffalo gets up I think. but then like some some like uh I want to say in that same video that like a alligator grabs the one side of it and the lion is grabbing the other and they're yeah. pulling do you remember this I well there's a few like that but that's crazy but I've seen that Cape Buffalo one where they roll up and all those lions are like oh yeah crap. They're back and they down. stay as long as they can and there's there's a couple where you're surprised like the lions will have the young cape buffalo for like five minutes and then the then he gets up and some he doesn't get up yeah but i'm always surprised but i mean i, I mean that's like the you know having a bad day thing where um you know yeah like uh, lions biting your face and then you're like how could this get any worse and then the <laughs> alligator grabs on the oh, back i know and then they're tug of warring you and you're like bro come yeah. on yeah these hyenas man they they i like hyenas i we had a hyena at my school she was awesome savuti great name you hated hyenas. no no i like this hyena. i don't there are certain animals that i just think wild dogs are my number one they're there i do not like them but you love dogs yeah but the wild dogs i love wolves i love dogs wild dogs are just like they're so mean to hyenas and they're like wild horrible dogs look like hyenas, and they come right? not really and they come and they just bite the hyenas butts all the time and the hyenas are like it's like horribly brutal and they like think it's fun i think and then but the hyenas i'm not really in love they also like they come in and they steal leopards food all the time that make you feel sad yeah i don't like it i mean don't you think like you did all that work and then this hyena just rolls in because he's bigger and stronger and takes your food what a weird thing so i don't like it i i think you know you have like hunters that might want to hunt a elk or a deer and then you know that same person would not, see would see a deer being chased by a wolf like uh you know is fairly common right and then it's like you're rooting for the deer to get away it's yeah. like why why is it that you don't because want one will for sure deer? die the other will most likely not die yeah, the, the wolf has That's very why. little chance of dying in that yeah, yeah. encounter. Well, he and he probably won't starve. Probably yeah, catch something starve. else. So one, you're going to see a death 100% or you're going to see a death 1% and you won't even see the death. That's why I it, to answer your question. That's why. Um, um, isn't it a bit bizarre that, um, isn't it a bit bizarre that you are this pretty renowned dog trainer and you love dogs and yet you don't really like wild dogs? Like you probably don't love coyotes that much. I said wild dogs mainly, but wild dogs. But I mean, even African still. painted dogs. Yeah, but I don't think also. Well, and then obviously, um, we've already talked about this on the podcast that the hyenas are not dog dogs or related to yeah canines. mongoose. But um, but also, you probably don't love coyotes. If you see a coyote, you're probably not rooting for it to get something, right? No, I like coyotes. What about wolves? I love wolves. Do you root for the wolf to get some? Animal. I don't like slow deaths. Like fast deaths. And wolves killing buffalo is an hour long. They just start eating it alive. I don't like that. I don't like to watch that. I don't like to think I'm that buffalo or that yeah. young buffalo. It and it's you. the young buffalo's wondering why his mom and dad are still running away as he's being eaten alive. It's terror. I don't like terror. Yeah. Pain. So for these animals. This is the wild. So I get part it. Of it is I've just been around it. I, I've, I've studied it my whole life. I understand. It doesn't mean I need to just go like, oh, that buffalo feels no pain. I think it does. I think it's similar to me, like uh, rooting for the underdog, right? Even yeah. in UFC, it's like you'll see somebody and then you'll be like, I'm not rooting for that guy. And then that guy, you're like, he's so outmatched. You're like, come on, man, you can do it. It's like Rocky. Like you want the underdog yeah. to overcome the odds. That's yeah. more interesting than the predictable. Yes. Right, like the lion, the lion getting the gazelle does not make front page news. Yeah, 
but that gazelle getting the lion is like yeah will never happen yeah never happen but to be fair with the wild some of those deers and elk they can stomp the crap out of you so like even though oh yeah you know a wolf can get an elk a wolf or a wolf can get trampled by an elk if it's not careful i just saw one where the elk is trying to trample trample the wolf might have been a small moose and it's in the water and that wolf is not giving up and he's just getting trampled and put underwater it's crazy what one wolf can do actually did you see the one with the cat with uh, the mountain lion that was um that had the small deer or it's probably i think it was i think it was a cow elk in her calf i guess what they call that or the yearling or whatever it was i don't know fawn um was in the mountain lion got a hold of the the calf or the you know yeah i didn't see whatever that was and the i don't i think it ended up getting it but the the cow elk which is probably 500 or four three to five hundred pounds ran up and was like stomping it stomped it it went back multiple times and stomped it and it didn't matter though it still got it but yeah i'm sure that it could have killed it could have in the future could have ended up killing that wolf like you never know it was a wolf or a mountain lion oh yeah you're right a mountain lion but you never know what type of internal injuries could be caused by like stomp like a 400 hoof. pound yeah. hoof stomping your, what the one your of the worst vineyards. is like when when a lion will get like um a giraffe and then the mom comes over and tries to kick them and they like kick their baby in the head and kill the baby happens all the time you can see videos of it and they just kill their own kid because they're trying to get the other thing it's like a uh, it sucks it's like the craziness of battle right that yeah it's happens. a war stuff happens war and- is hell yeah you get, the wild is hell yeah it really is it really is africa especially it just shows in america and other western and i'm sure other eastern societies how how truly good we have it and i think a lot of people forget that you know we wake up in a bed under a roof sometimes we have heating and air conditioning and we have food in the refrigerator and you look at these animals and you're like or humans from long ago or yeah it's like, if they didn't get something they were gonna starve to death yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. A long way. I, I saw these guys speaking of like in Alaska and he's cruising outside and his like ring doorbell catches it. He's just putting the trash out and a freaking moose like comes charging at him and he had to hide in his like- Was his dog there? There was one with the dog there and then there's another. But I'm just like, I also, I was watching that because I was like, wow, dude, you're in Alaska. Like you got to get up and shovel your snow or east coast mm-hmm. like we have oh yeah we, we don't have know anything so about that. out here dude we don't know anything southern about that california i know it's like you gotta create hardship for yourself or where you're get so soft yeah like sometimes i'm like oh i deal with these aggressive dogs and it like causes me like stress and anxiety sometimes aggressive dogs every day and it's scary and like uh i mean it's not scary scary but i'm like scared for my employees or I'm scared for the dog itself or I'm scared for Prince or I'm scared for myself or I'm scared for the client or whatever. And then I got to remember like, that's my adversity because I don't have other adversities. Yeah. I mean, that's the sad part about the human condition is that once, once you solve a lot of your problems that are the core, anyways, at Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs that once you solve them, then you start worrying about social issues and other types of oh, yeah. like secondary things. Or then you're just like oh. not wanting to lose things like, Oh, I hope I don't lose my house. Whereas like when you don't have a house, you don't worry about that type oh, of stuff. Yeah. So it's like you, you never stop worrying. You just worry about different things. Bro. Can I tell you this other thing? Then we got to probably wrap this thing up. Get I was Mexican thinking about food. on the way here. Yeah. What you got? So the, the people, when you look at Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and they go up and they interview people and they're like, Hey, you know, um um she's a 10 but you know she doesn't like football and then the person will say well she's a seven have you seen Mm -hmm. this trend no oh they go they just interview someone they go oh she's a 10 but she doesn't like football and you go oh she's a seven it's a 10 for me yeah okay or 10 for you yeah Yeah, exactly but anyway there's these stupid thing where people just go around and interview people random things usually at bars at night Mm -hmm. well they went to like protests like leftist protests and they just asked them random questions like non-protest questions and the people are like um they're like they can't believe that they're not being asked about what they're there for yeah and it shows you the utter um um 
oh my god we've been talking for two hours the utter like what's the opposite of funny or a sense of humor the utter nonsense of humor of these people yeah like uh i don't know they're just like they're just like like what and then they storm off all angry like wait you didn't ask me about the this create this cause that i'm protesting for like no no we're just asking you to be like a human being for a second and answer some fun question and they're like but i'm no fun like that's what they're saying they're like but no you're asking the wrong guy i'm no fun i know they're like i i have no sense of humor i i think too people people are real disappointed me for next week it's an interesting social experiment to go ask them yeah i think we should or we want to make sure that for next week uh, we apologize for not talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because I know people come to this channel to hear about this stuff. They look so, to us. <laughs> but, you know, we will we're going to let you slide on that broach one. that subject ever on this podcast. Fame, I'm going to knock on wood on that one, but the famous yeah. famous last words. But it is, uh, it's funny. We're like, we will never talk out of school like and that. Then we do. And then we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. do it. We'll do it. But the, I, the pod is asking for it. It is funny how... I can make fun of um, people and be like, and I get if you're involved then you're like whatever, but it's funny how I can look back like, you know, from a distance and be like, why are you guys getting wound up over something that you don't have control about? And then I'll just get wound up in something I have (laughs) no control about in the next, uh, you know, in the next second or whatever. So it's just funny. That is true. So, Hey, are we going to get any uh, Mexican food? Yeah, we're going to go right now. Roll tacos, flautas, flautas, the best in the business. All right, leave a comment down below. Voicemail. Voicemails in the comment or in the description box. Breed of the week. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, topics. Oh, one thing about comments. I screenshot a bunch of comments. We didn't get to as many as I would I like too. to. You screenshot comments. If you are not getting your comment read, it's probably because your comment's not that good. Because when I have comments, a lot of times he's read them and screenshotted them. So we're screenshotting the same comments because yeah. there's certain ones that you're like, that's a good comment. So if you haven't been read yet, maybe just, you know, spice it up. Yeah. Say something great. Talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Something. Like yeah. That. If you talk about Dungeons and Dragons, you're getting on. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was superb. If you're talking about, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons is hot fire. Yeah. Like how often do you hear Dungeons and Dragons? It's phenomenal. And look at, we went and she was a dungeon master. Yeah, I don't know what a dungeon master it's is. The, but it sounds it's the like head of the whole thing. It's like the Steven Seagal. Sure, it's like a cloak. The Steven Seagal of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Yes. That is That's amazing. the best example. Absolutely. Could be given. 152. So all right. for all you folks that thought we shortchanged you the last week or two, there you go. All right, bye. See you guys. Talk to you later.